Yo, what up? It's your boy Grade A. Video. How y'all doing? So, this video is for, I think it's Jorge. I think that's how you say it, or George. But I want to make this video because George was like, "Hey, man, last time you did that video was way too fast." And it really was super fast. It was sped up uh, just so I could get to the point. But I'm going to slow this one down just a little bit more so you can better understand how I'm doing the shadows in harmony. So it all starts with you have to have an understanding of light source and how to guesstimate where your light source is coming from. So you know where to put your shadows, both your core form shadows and your cast shadows. For the most part, the way I approach this, there is no separation or distinction between where the light, the core shadow and the cast shadow start and end, or where the core shadow ends and the cast shadow starts and ends. They all just mesh together or mush together. Um, so once I guesstimate that, now all I do is I just go in, I like to use a purple, doesn't matter what color you use, but I like to use a purple. And then I just go through and I put shadows wherever I feel like putting them. No, I try to figure out as best as I can, best off of that fake light sphere that I have in the right corner there, where I think my light's coming from, I try to be as honest as possible sometimes I fudge things because it gets it, it makes things look unappealing uh, like eventually I'll go back in in his mouth and I'll erase out some of where I put shadow on his gum line and in this case I paint all out of the lines because painting inside the lines doesn't really matter in here because I could use the transparency to cut that out um, and I, I think it's awesome that it's vector because if you want, you can always go back and change the shape. Uh, but it cuts it out by using the art above it. So it'll use the art of the character to cut out the shadow. So that's what I'm going to do. In, in my note er editor here, I'm just going in. And the first thing I do is I tell Harmony automatically out all my notes. That was the button I clicked. It's just space them out so I can see them. And then I just start moving them around for more clarity because I just need to be able to have all of the nodes flow properly and not have them overlap and get jumbled and make a mess. So once that's done and that's ready, uh, I'll go into my um, note library and I'll bring in a few things. So one of the things that I'm gonna bring in is I'm going to bring in the um, the nodes so I can uh, quickly do the, the shadow stuff and then I'm gonna also bring in a node so I can do the blending so the blending is so it's similar to Photoshop again uh, if you want to be able to do multiply add overlay hard light soft light screen any of those number of things the only drawback is that when you're working in harmony you have to go from the preview to render there are some other ways you can connect nodes that'll uh, do a preview render for you and you don't have to turn that on uh, I usually don't connect those nodes because I, I do a lot more animating than I do the final line rendering stuff but since I'm planning on doing some of my own stuff this year I'm trying to spend a little bit more time figuring out some of the way I want to finish the work so that's the only reason I'm, I'm doing a lot of this stuff and just sharing it with you just so you if you're struggling with this stuff you can go oh, oh that's cool I can do that uh, so I made a couple more swatches because what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a, a background in there I didn't want to use a color card because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some gradation to it um, so I just made a swatch for just a blue color I made that a layer by itself and then I made another layer and then I made another swatch that was just gradient and it says purple for some reason is my favorite shadow color and I think because I like the complement of yellow purple but I didn't really use yellow 
for the light, which I usually would do. I would add a light layer that has some uh, yellow in it. But in this case, I'm just purple. And I like that purple keeps things kind of warm. So even if you go in and you do uh, multiply and all that sort of stuff, if, when you have the purple, it'll add just this, a little bit of warmth to the color and it won't, like if you just use black, sometimes black will make it a little drab. It'll take some of the life out of the color that you have. So that's just a personal choice. What's cool is the swatches in Harmony allow you to just, if you decide to change your mind, you can change your mind any number of times. So all I'm doing here now is because when I draw with a brush, it makes the outside lines separate strokes from the fill. So I'm just going through and I'm, I'm uh, flattening the lines and the color together. So when I do my gradient, that I don't have any lines on the outside. So once I apply the gradient, I go into my select tool and then hold down the mouse and then underneath that there's an option to go in and edit the gradient and the texture so I go in there and then I rotate my um, gradient the direction that I want it to be and I use the little manipulators to adjust it uh, into the position that I like and I really just wanted just a little bit of color at the bottom and I wanted to feather out to that little blue at the top that was just I just threw that in there because it, it felt flat it was just blue just felt flat so I'm going to add a little pop so I'm back into my note editor again um, I mean my note view if if you hate the note view you could probably do most of your work the original work in in harmony and then throw it in Photoshop or sketchbook or manga or whatever you use uh, to do any sort of fancy stuff um, I'm just messing with this stuff in harmony because again I, at some point I want to do some animation and I want to take it to finish myself so I'm trying to practice how I could do some finishing stuff inside Harmony and have it be able to animate and do all the work in here so what I'm doing now is I'm adding a cutter if you stay inside the lines this step is unnecessary but since I don't feel like staying inside the lines because can't nobody tell me to stay inside the lines I scribbled all outside the lines and make a mess and, and mostly because I plan on trying to do some of this shadow stuff really fast if I can. What the cutter is going to allow me to do is going to allow me to now cut the outside lines. So all I need to do is connect the cutter to the, um, the artwork. So in this case, um, I'm trying to connect it to the shadow and then I'm using the character to cut in the mask part so that first little box that looks like a mask is a mask and so what I had to do is when I originally cut it it cuts the inside part and leaves the outside so I just invert it which is inverting the mask and so that it cuts the outside and leaves the inside um, so all I'm doing now is I went back in there I erased out some of the upper teeth because it made him look like he, he didn't have teeth so I went back and erased that to let it the tea shine through and then it looked a little more appealing it didn't look like a, a old man instead so if you want at this point you could basically just say oh, I'm done high five yourself and call it a day um, check your renders of course so the two little buttons in that uh, camera view the preview which is the the white flower and then the render view is the bluish flower just help you to be able to see what it looks like uh, so then all I do is I start going through the layers and adjusting the opacity so that I like to multiply but it was too dark so all I did was go into the layers and adjust this so it was uh, I think 50 30 percent it was something around there um, it's up to you how how opaque you want it how dark you want it uh, you can play with the color you can play with the shadow uh, so what I'm going in now is I'm adding a, a radio blur so I can soften the edge because I, I instead of making it look more comic book cut out or I guess more cell shaded I wanted to soften the edge a little bit so I went into the radio blur and I just start playing with the numbers so there's no specific number it, it'll vary depending on the scale and the size of your your scene as well uh, I'm working 1920 20, 20, 20, 1980 
uh and so it's i mean it's your standard high res so but the size of the the artwork is pretty big on the screen and all i'm doing is i'm just tweaking it as much as i can to figure out how soft i want it uh, one thing that's important is the order of your notes if you put your blur at the bottom you can see that the blur goes past the line because it's go it's underneath the uh, the cutter where it cuts the transparency if you put it above the cutter you can see that the blur stays inside the line that's an important distinction because if you're not expecting it to creep past that line you need to make sure you put your node uh, in the proper place uh, especially if you're trying to blur it and you're expecting the blur to stay inside the line and not overlap make sure you put your blur above your cutter it seems like such a simple thing but with almost anything technology i mean the smallest i don't want to say mistake but the smallest order of things if they're not in the right order you just don't get the results that you expect so just pay attention be aware so you don't make a mistake like that and end up staring at the screen for hours crying saying i just want the shadow to stay inside the line and then spend hours trying to either erase it or do something wacky that you didn't have to do um so and the same thing would be true even if you stayed inside the line you would have to go back in and uh cut it properly so it doesn't mess up so all i did now is i just made a white i wanted to make the crazy highlight on the eye so that the eyes just popped and i put a little highlight across the teeth the tongue the cheeks uh and i went in and i did if i yeah i softened this one so it wasn't be as intense um so i would have a little bit of variation in the the sort of lighting so and it's the same it's the same approach as before i just went into the the node library brought in that uh, blending composite and then I brought in a, a blur as well and then played around with the blur played around with the opacity of the layer to try to get the results that I specifically wanted so it's again like none of this is rocket science after this I mean once you once you do it a few times it's super easy like it's nothing beyond like I just can't achieve this the I will say that you can end up with a lot of connections and you could potentially end up with a long list of things in your timeline as long as you know what they do it's not as daunting but if you're unsure uh, i think harmony does an amazing job with all of their uh, online training with all of their and it, the online training stuff a lot of it is free uh, it's just time investment and in addition their uh, manuals and online documentation i mean you could google search that thing and it's pretty clear and easy to read and and you can most of the time figure out what you need to do from there as well and there's a ton of people online that you could probably send a message and say hey how'd you do that I, as far as i know most most people tend to be you know pretty friendly and they might even make a youtube video like this so hopefully this makes sense uh, I mean, the, the rest of this stuff is just going back in and adding additional layers. I added a couple reflected lights, so I'm taking some of the color from the heart, bouncing it onto the face. Then I'm going to take some of the color from the shirt, bounce it on the other side of the face. And all it is is just I wanted to add a little more color variation, a little bit more volume to things. Again, not necessary. There's a 99% chance that if I'm doing animation and I'm trying to finish something, I'm probably not going to be doing that because that is a added additional step that will be exceptionally time consuming. And you know, even if you finished animation and you're like excited about finishing and you have to go back and do this on every single frame, probably not, probably not. Because as far as I know, there's no auto, I mean, there's probably ways you can offset your drawings because I've seen people do it to make uh, like reflected lights or rim lights uh and uh, it's just picking the color offsetting your artwork and then having it do a cutter to cut it out so you would see like a rim light on the edge and you can blur it if you want um but that's i don't know so that's how you make the shadows if you have any other questions let me know hopefully you valentine's day was good for you thank you for watching this 
subscribe great fun i'm out